Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we're playing two truths and a lie again. I love doing this with GED students. Um, not only is this skill here directly tested on the GED, you're supposed to be able to identify equivalent expressions, uh, basically see when two math statements are equal to each other. But um, I also love it because it helps develop math reasoning and avoid some really common student errors. So something that students mess up all the time is this concept, the concept of raising negative numbers to a power. So just to let you know, I'm going to be talking about this today, and I'm going to be referencing the order of operations. So if you've never learned the order of operations, or if you've never really understood it properly, this might be a little confusing for you. That's the background knowledge you need here. But let's go ahead and take a look. It says, one of the statements below is a lie. Can you spot the fraud? Okay, so let's take a look um, at A first. A first. Now, A, um, the two expressions look almost equivalent. On this side, I see negative 1 to the third power. And on this side, I see negative 1. The only difference is it's in parentheses this time to the third power. And we're not quite sure if those two things are equivalent or not. How could we check? Well, you could check if they're equivalent by simplifying them. If you do the math to simplify them, each side by itself, and you get the same answer, well then, guess what? They're equivalent. So let's try that. Let's start with the expression on the left-hand side first. Negative 1 to the third power. Now I told you you were going to need a little bit of background about the order of operations in order to do this. Indeed, here's where it comes up. And this is what I need to let you know, and this is what a lot of students don't understand. There are two operations here in this expression. That's right, there's two. This one is being negated. It's being made into a negative. Guys, negation is an act of multiplication. So it's like that negative sign and that 1 are multiplying. <laughs> I'm trying to write up too far on my multiplication. There we go. So um, negation is an act of multiplication. So it's like that negative and that 1 are multiplying. And then I also have a power, an exponent. Now let's remember the four steps to the order of operations. The first step is to do any groupings. Now I don't have any groupings here, no insides of anything, no parentheses, no brackets, um, so there aren't any groupings to do here. But the second step of the order of operations is to do exponents. So I need to tackle my exponent next. Now take a look at what I'm going to do when I look at this expression. I am just going to circle the 1 and the 3. That exponent is weak. It only works on the number. It does not touch that negative sign. Because that negative sign is multiplying in, we're going to deal with that last. So I'm going to deal with just plain old 1 to the third power first. So what does 1 to the third power mean? If you're not sure, come down here in your scratch work. Write out that in expanded form. 1 to the third power means 1 times 1 times 1. And if I multiply 1 times 1, I get 1. And if I were to multiply that by 1 again, I'd still get 1. So 1 to the third power is 1. And now you should be saying, but what about that negative? Well, we said first we would do exponents, and then in the order of operations we do any multiplication division. Since, multipl since negation is an act of multiplication, now I'll take whatever answer I got and turn it negative. And so I do get negative 1. Now, let's contrast that to this next side. Let's look at the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, I had this expression, negative 1 cubed, negative 1 cubed. Now, notice I have used parentheses to change this order of operations. Now, I grouped the negative with the 1. So, what am I saying to you for now? I'm, now, I'm saying do that first. When you put something in a grouping, you do that first. So, okay, we're going to consider this negative and this 1 together, this whole group, and raise that to the third power. So, if I look at this one in my side work, this means the same as negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. The parentheses strengthen that exponent so we can grab both the number and the sign. So let's see what happens if we were to do this problem. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And if I were to multiply that by 1 more negative 1, a positive 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1. So in this one I get a negative 1 as well. So guess what? 
When I simplified this, it gave me negative 1. When I simplified that, it gave me negative 1. Are these two expressions equivalent? They absolutely are. This is not a lie. This is true. And I'm trying to spot the lie here. But it is true that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next one. A lot of students make the false assumption that if it's true one time, it's going to be true all the time. Uh, well, let's go take a look if we take that exact same number, negative 1, but instead we raise it to the fourth power. So first I'm going to do it this way. So remember, without the parentheses, that exponent is weak. It only works on the number. It doesn't take the sign. So let's think about one to the, what 1 to the fourth power means. 1 to the fourth power means 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. And after I'm done with that math, I'll negate my answer. So 1 times 1 is 1 times 1 is 1, times 1 again is 1. And now that I'm done with the math, I'll negate my answer. Um, exponents happen before negation. All right, and so I get negative 1. If I were to simplify this expression, I get negative 1. Now let's take a look at the right-hand side. Would I get the same answer? Are they really equivalent? Well, I don't know. Let's see. What does negative 1 to the fourth power mean when there's parentheses? Well, when there's parentheses, I'm saying take this whole thing, the whole negative 1, and do it four times. So I'm going to write negative 1 times negative 1. See the difference here? With the parentheses, the negative ends up getting repeated. Without the parentheses, it doesn't. Okay, a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. And I end up getting positive 1 times 1, and I just end up with a positive 1. Did these two give me equivalent answers? They surely did not. These two things are not equivalent. This is a lie. So I'm done, so you can feel free to turn off the video if you want to, but you know I'm a teacher. Never want to miss an opportunity to teach. So I do want to show you why C is true, because a lot of students told me C was the lie, and they were wrong. Let's take a look at what negative 1 squared means. Okay, so we said that if you see something like this, what you should deal with first is the number. So I'll deal with that. Uh, 1 squared is 1 times 1, or just 1. And now that I'm done squaring, now I'll negate. There were no parentheses, so I get negative 1. Now let's take a look at this expression. This expression doesn't have exponents, but it does have a grouping. Remember, in the order of operations, we simplify groupings first. Well, these parentheses group to this 1 times 1, so let's go ahead and do 1 times 1. 1 times 1 is 1. I'm done with my grouping. And of course, the opposite or negative 1 is, I'm sorry, the opposite or negative of 1 is negative 1. And so look, left-hand side, I got a negative 1. Right-hand side, I got a negative 1. Are these two expressions equivalent? They sure are. This is not a lie. So the lie or the fraud was B. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.